Hi guys, I am here at the True Story from the book we've been reading. We are going to finish this book tonight. This is the second to last story in the book. It's 10 after 10 p.m. right now. Didn't know it was that late. Now this one is by Sylvia Stewart and it is called The Night of the Jackal. The jackals howl. That grim night made my situation seem much worse than it was. My missionary parents, my brother Jim and I first arrived in Africa a few days short of my sixth birthday. Palm trees lining the dirt airstrip seemed to fly by as our plane taxied into the terminal. A small thatchet roof building standing in the shade of the palms. The next day my family and I started our long journey uh, from Lepoldville, now Kinshasa, into the bush country to our mission station in the Ituri region of the eastern Belgian Congo, now called Democratic Republic of the Congo. Our new life held many joys. Traveling to our new home, my brother Jim and I were excited to see a variety of animals, including baboons and long-haired black and white colobus monkeys bounding among the trees, antelopes and zebras fed on the tropical vegetation. When we came to a clearing in the great rainforest, we saw elephants, cape buffalo, gazelles, and wild pigs. Our parents told us that leopards, hyenas, and jackals also prowled in the night. As we adjusted to living in Africa, we learned to enjoy eating buffalo or gazelle for dinner. With our Congolese friends, we ate roasted field corn on the cob, fried ants, roasted or boiled root, and bongos, cooked green bananas, plantain bananas. At home, we could eat all the bananas, pineapple, and mangoes we wanted, and we learned nothing was sweeter than freshly squeezed juice from a tree ripened oranges. What an exciting new life. My parents homeschooled us until I finished the second grade. During our recesses, Jim and I fed our pet monkey or played house under the shade of an Orlander bush, watching carefully for snakes or spiders that might drop into our play area. Eventually, Mama and Daddy decided Jim and I needed to go to Rift Valley Academy, a Christian boarding school in the Highlands. Not only was the air cooler, but we could also enjoy fresh milk because flies didn't live in the Highlands to kill off the cattle. We could also be away from malaria bearing mosquitoes. Our new school had no telephone, so we couldn't talk with our parents for three months of our school term. If we needed mama or daddy, our dorm parents would have to send a message by radio phone. Because of rough roads, if our parents came to visit, it would take 10 hours to drive to our school, even though we were only 350 miles away. So we kept in contact through weekly letters. Living in a dorm with lots of other girls was fun for a while. However, a few weeks into my boarding school experience, I lost the fascination of being a big girl on my own. Reality had set in. I quickly learned that a smart missionary kid chose the top bunk because none of her friends could sit on it and mess up the covers. I felt disturbed when some girls borrowed things without asking for permission. So much better to be homeschooled. I missed our pets. They were not allowed at boarding school. However, we climbed trees, played pilgrims and Indians, making wampum from chains and stems to redeem the captured, and had a picnic in the pine forest at midterm. Although Jim attended the same school, he stayed in the boys wing of the dorm. He played with the bigger boys on the playground, and I had no interest in their rougher games. My class met in a different room from Jim's, so I usually saw him only from a distance, and finding him at mealtime among the 75 kids swarming the dining room didn't seem to work. The worst part of my day was bedtime. 
Loneliness would smother my heart like the stuffy mosquito nets draped from the ceiling over my bed at home. Then came the night I heard the jackal howl. I turned over every few minutes trying to find a comfortable position. The tropical moonlight beaming through the window made a white rectangle on the floor, causing me to be even more wakeful and restless. I watched the rectangle creak toward the door as the minutes passed. Memories of home and longing for my parents flooded my mind. An intense sadness clutched my heart. I rolled over onto my back and tears sprang into my eyes. The white window curtains swished back and forth over the windowsill on puffs of warm breeze. I'm alone, so far from my parents. The jackal howled again at the moon. Even though I knew a jackal was just a wild dog, his mournful call made me feel sadder. I won't be able to see mama and daddy for a long time. I can't even phone them. And what if I get sick or hurt? Who will take care of me? I'm all alone and I'm only a kid. I guess I'll have to take care of myself, but I don't know how to do that. I started to cry. Maybe mama and daddy don't really want me anymore. I suppose teaching us kids at home was too much trouble. The jackal howled again. The long yap and wail of the wild dog's despair echoed my own. Tears trickled through the hair at my temples and down into my ears. I pulled my pillow out from under my head and clapped it to my face, trying to smother the deep sobs that erupted. Poor little sweet kid, only six years old. I just wanna hold her and hug her. Every boarding school kid knew it was sissy to cry. I guess my parents don't want me. Maybe God doesn't even want me. I'm alone, all alone. I felt like my heart would break. Then in the suffocating darkness under my stuffy pillow, God spoke to my heart as clearly as if he had been standing right beside my bunk. Of course your mama and daddy love you and you're not alone. Don't be afraid, I am with you. Go to sleep now. Even though the comfort seemed small at the time, my sobbing eased and the knot in my chest relaxed. Sniffing back my tears, I turned on my side, jammed the pillow back under my head and fell asleep. After that experience, I never again doubted God's presence with me or whether he or my parents loved me. When I feel alone, abandoned or discarded, I remind myself that God will never leave me. God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Hebrews 13, five. The jackal's howl of despair may echo in our soul at times, but no matter where we are or in what situation we find ourselves, God is always near to protect and comfort us. We are never alone. Good night.